Well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Scooter Kellum, and I'm with the Alabama State Board of Missions. I'm the Youth Ministry Strategist, um, and, and we're glad this morning we're going to be talking about transitions, uh, transition from high school uh, graduation to college, and how we can do that more effectively, and how we can um, how we can just just resource uh, youth pastors that might be on here or seeing this as this is being recorded, um, or or college ministry. So so we've uh, we've brought in um, we brought in Cleve Mallory from Eastmont Baptist Church and team leader of our transitions teams with YM Link. Um, and so we're glad that he's here to join and, and present uh, from his team and, and things like that. And he's going to tell you a little bit more about that today. Um, but then, I, but before we get launch into to Cleve's presentation and kind of resourcing and talking in this webinar, um, I want to turn it over to Chris uh, so he can talk a little bit about um, about what he does and, uh, and and just talk about college ministry. So, Chris. Yeah. Um, so I'm Chris Mills, and uh, you. Uh, in signing up for this, you may have uh, seen Scooter's name, Cleve's name, and Mike Nuss's name. Um, Mike's mother-in-law passed away yesterday afternoon, so I'm jumping in for him. Uh, I know that he and Judy would appreciate your uh, your prayers uh, during this season uh, for them. And my role here uh, in the Collegiate Student Ministries Office of the State Board of Missions is uh, primarily collegiate student mobilization. And so as we talk about, um, about mobilizing college students, uh, we're, we're talking about mobilizing them uh, to the nations, uh, to, to ministries here in Alabama and all across the globe, but their primary ministry focus would be their campus. And so as we think about that, I want to, I want to share with you a couple of statistics that you've heard a million times, but uh, you know that between 70 to 80 percent of, uh, of uh, incoming freshmen, uh, incoming college students move away from their faith in college. Um, and that, that's a variety of reasons, but, but one of the things we, can, we, we certainly know is that the first three weeks of college are of extreme importance. Uh, they're, they're of extreme importance and they kind of determine a lot of the patterns that students begin to take and connections they make. And so uh, today, we want to, to talk about some ways to, to connect and engage with those students and keep them connected uh, to, to, uh, to the local BCM, to the local church um, while, while in college. Uh, we, we recently, uh, and well, I guess it's been almost two years now, have, have uh, begun an emphasis uh, focused on reaching every student. Um, that here in the state of Alabama, uh, there are over 300,000 college students and as many as 200,000 of them do not have a relationship with Jesus, are not engaged in church, are not engaged in, in, uh, in living out their faith. And so if we, uh, if we want to see uh, every student reached with the gospel, then those students that are already reached, those students connected to your youth ministries now uh, that are going into college, we, we've got to do all we can to keep them engaged and connected. And so um, that, that's going to happen through, uh, through the local church, um, for sure. That's going to happen through uh, BCM. That's going to happen through campus ministry. And it's going to happen all for the kingdom. And, uh, and that's what we're here to talk about today is how can we do that. Um, before I turn it over to Cleve, I want to, uh, if you're taking notes, and I'll put this link in chat, um, but there's a, there's a, a, a brand new page we, j we just launched today on uh, the BCM Link website, bcmlink.org slash connect. And um, there's a video there that we're going to be sending out to you. But also along with that, there is a, uh, there's a form to complete to connect your students uh, with, uh, with campus ministries uh, all across the state of Alabama. And so I'd encourage you to, to take some time those graduating seniors that you uh, that are part of your ministry, um, wherever they're going um, here in Alabama and even beyond, uh, to fill that form out and let us uh, connect them with uh, with BCM um, somewhere on on whatever campus God has called them to. So, uh, I I hope that today is a, a day of encouragement, a day of challenge uh, for you as um, as we are, are all in this together. Uh, our, our heart, um, the, the common bond that we have, of course, is, is, is Christ and, and the hope we have in him, but also uh, a passion and desire to reach every student. 
And so uh, I pray that today is the day where we would um, we would be uh, better uh, better equipped and challenged to do that. So, Cleve, I'll turn it over to you, and and you can you can share with us. Awesome, man. I appreciate it. Uh, just to kind of brief who I am, my name is Cleve Mallory. I'm the student pastor at Eastmont Baptist Church here in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, I've been here for about three and a half years, uh, closer, I guess, now to four. And uh, I've been in student ministry uh, for over 15 years. I spent uh, nine years previously in a rural area in Billingsley, Alabama, kind of in the Chilton County uh, area as well. <clears throat> and so, um, so I've kind of been in, in a city context and in a rural context, but one thing that I've noticed is the, the need for this type of ministry, uh, for us being intentional with the concept of transitions in student ministry. Um, uh, but Scooter asked me to be on this team, <clears throat> excuse me, Scooter asked me to serve on this transitions team, and I want to give a, um, <clears throat> a shout out to the names of the individuals who are, who are serving on this with me, uh, John Lamarck, <clears throat> Emily Hamilton, Dennis Tanner, Bill Morrison, who is actually a BCM uh, pastor on, at UAB, and then also Abby Johnson as well, who's not going to be able to be with us today. But um, <clears throat> ranging all throughout the state are these individuals, and they've been super helpful uh, with us as we've really just tried to wrap our minds around how to approach this such a broad topic. And so what I want to do with you right now is just kind of define some of the characteristics of what we're trying to do, the, the what, the who, the why, and then the when, and um, I'll make that make sense in a second. But when we speak about transitions, it's, it's, we need to understand what we're, what we're referring to are that is, is that in student ministry, our entire ministry is built around the concept of transitions. If you're involved in student ministry in any way, whether you're a student pastor or whether you're a volunteer just serving in some capacity or, or a, uh, a, a life group or a, a Sunday school leader in your church, your job is to transition students from one, uh, one age range, one, uh, one group to the next. Um, the whole reason that we exist is because the church, at some point in church history, there was the, the, the vision, there was the need uh, to specifically invest in teenagers who are ultimately transitioning from childhood to adulthood. And so we see that need. And we can see in scriptures a couple of passages that in the Old Testament that jump out. Uh, Proverbs 22, 6 is one that we go to really easily. Train up a child in the way they should go. All right? And when they're old, they won't depart from it. So there's this idea that, that it, is the, it is the role of the parent specifically in this. But we can kind of interject some of our, what we're trying to do there in training up children as they progress, as they mature physically. And then also this Psalm 127, 4, like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. And so this ideas as well as we are preparing them as they transition to be launched out, uh, to be, to be in, in, I guess in essence, weapons for the kingdom of God, for the advancement of the kingdom of God. And so we see the need of that. Uh, that's, that's the what. Um, the, the why uh, is because uh, Chris has already touched on that, and, and you guys have heard the statistics, I'm sure, and that's probably why you clicked to join this webinar, but um, we're, we're somewhere now in the range of 60 to 70 percent of church students who are falling away once they depart from their immediate church context and the home churches in which they've been raised. And remember, when I, when I used to see those uh, those statistics, I used to think, well, you know, um, 80 percent, but not all of them are church. But the idea is that we're talking about church students. We're not even talking about the lost world. We're not talking about those who have not been influenced with the gospel in some way. We're talking about students who were raised uh, in a church context, uh, who, who were actively involved to, in some capacity with their student ministries, if they had some, or just with their church ministries. Uh, and when they were given the opportunity for freedom of choice, I guess, at age 18 or beyond, they are spending time departing the church, spending time out of church. And the longer that that ensues, we're realizing that what we're doing is we are creating cultures where that becomes the norm. Um, we don't intend to do it. It's not intentional for certain, um, but we've got to look at the fruit of what we're doing. So here's kind of the why of what we're doing. As we begin to examine the fruit of our efforts, we see that there is something that we're not doing to connect students to the fact that as they become young adults, the needs for them to step up and serve in their church capacities or to continue to be involved in churches is at a great need. Um, I became painfully aware of this uh, in my previous stint as in student ministry uh, where I served. 
when I departed from there and I look back on the students that I had close relationships to, and now I see that, that so many of them are not actively walking with the Lord, though they may not abandon, uh, have abandoned their faith uh, 100%. They have uh, drifted away from active church attendance, and they've certainly drifted away from serving for the kingdom and living actively for the kingdom of God. And that was never my intention. And I know that it was in my preaching. I know that my preaching covered those topics. I know that in my conversations with them, I covered those topics, but something was missing. And so what we want to do is we wanted to try to attack that and see hey, what are we missing as churches in the state of Alabama, at least, how can we buck the trend? And so that's kind of the why of why, uh, why we exist. Um, the who of transitions has been one of the most interesting, I guess, revelations to me in this process. Um, all of our team that I mentioned earlier, their names I mentioned earlier, we, our focus in student ministry tends to obviously be on students themselves. We spend time with students on Sundays, on Wednesdays. And what we found is that the who cannot simply involve students. And so I know some of your questions, I hope some of your questions today might revolve around this concept, but, but we also saw a need, and we know that there is a need for us to connect with adults and with parents as well. And rather than separating that out from student ministry, we see the need that for transitions to occur well, that there has to be a need for us to connect with parents. Uh, and and I, we do realize that so many of our students in our churches now uh, come from broken homes. They come from, uh, from areas, maybe they're the only student that comes, uh, and they are, sorry, they're the only individual in their family that comes. Some of them don't have families that they live with that are able to do that. And so we realize that's a challenge in itself, um, but they spend so much more time uh, with other adults than they do with you. And so we've got to train up adults. We've got to train up parents uh, to also be investing in them. Um, we, uh, and then it comes to the, so I've got the who, or I got the what, the who, and the why, and then the when. And when I say when, I'm not talking about the like when as far as what time we do this, um, but I'm talking about the when as in what is our success? What is our goal in student ministry? And I think our definition of that is where we are lacking the most. Um, most of us in our student ministry approach to transitioning kids from high school to college, uh, we take a I know that I used to be this way. So um, we take a, uh, a path of what I would call procrastination. It is where we, we simply put off intentionally the thing that we should have been doing all along. Um, we, we forget that our ultimate role in student ministry is to, to begin transitioning students from their childhood to their adulthood. And I do realize that, that many of us, you would say, well, our ultimate goal should be to make disciples. And you're absolutely right. But the problem is, is that the call to make disciples wasn't given to student ministries. It was given to all believers. And so the church's goal overall should be to make disciples. And I pray that every one of you who are serving in student ministry in some capacity, that you are serving in churches and you are serving under pastors who see that need, who communicate that vision to the people, and that you are, you are in church cultures that values the idea of being disciples that make disciples. And if not, then your work just doubled as a student pastor because probably that is a huge passion of yours. Um, so yes, the church's call is to make disciples. But within student ministry itself, we've got to understand that we have a secondary role in there as we're helping to make disciples. As we're making disciples, we need to be focusing specifically on this concept of transitioning. So rather than procrastinating and allowing time to go by, you only get six years. Our entire student ministry existence is built around a cycle. It's all cyclical. Uh, we get students at sixth or seventh grade, depending upon your setup at your church, and you've got six years essentially to invest in that student. And the difficulty in student ministry, uh, and, and also some of the, it's the challenge, but also it's the beauty when it, when it works well, is the fact that we never get to know how successful we've truly been until they're beyond our reach in a way, until they step away from us and very much like parenting. Uh, we, don't, we don't get to see true success in student ministry until they depart from us and they begin to make choices on their college campuses or in the career fields that they make. Uh, and so we see then the fruit. So as we have seen the fruit, we've given the statistics, we see where the fruit is, is leading on, on the big picture. We need to heed the warnings that are there and realize we need to make some changes to the culture that we have. And rather than procrastinate and just hope it goes well, we need to intentionally plan. We need to have an orderly arrangement of parts, uh, overall design, objectives. Um, 
we need to have purpose in what we're doing and communicate that from a young age at sixth, seventh, eighth grade, they need to know that our plan is to transition them the whole way. We're preparing them to be adults. And we also need to be preparing their parents to prepare them. And so there's that, that word is used over and over again. Um, but that's the what, the who, the why, and then ultimately the when. How do we know we're being successful? We know we're being successful when we see students have and de uh, develop and demonstrate a connection and a need for a covenant people when they go to college. I know our focus on this specific webinar is us preparing students for college as they transition from high school into college. And so uh, we know we've been successful when they can clearly communicate to us, when they demonstrate, um, not simply by word of mouth, because they're always going to tell their youth pastor what he wants to hear or what she wants to hear, right? Um, but we want to make sure that we are seeing uh, an active uh, dependence upon church community, uh, that, that we, we want to see them seeking out church community uh, when they begin to connect to their college campuses. Are they asking you questions about uh, what churches are in the cities they're going to? Uh, you as a student pastor need to be researching these cities. We know that in the state of Alabama, you have your major cities. You have Auburn, you have Tuscaloosa, not in that order, just kidding. Uh, you have Auburn, Tuscaloosa, Troy, uh, Jacksonville, Huntsville, uh, Mobile. Uh, you have some major major cities uh, where we have our, our most of our larger colleges, but even in some of the smaller communities where we have colleges in West Alabama and uh, other areas of North Alabama, we need to see where our students are going and we need to be connected in the local churches that are that, that share the same values that we have and who have demonstrated that they want to invest in the college students that we're sending them. We need to stress church uh, membership, church attendance. Uh, we also need to be connecting them to their campus pastors, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We've got a few campus pastors here uh, that have joined us today, and uh, and they'll have an opportunity to share a little bit too, depending on how our Q&A sessions go. Uh, but we need to be connecting them with individuals who can hold them accountable on campus in a biblical way, but who are also going to push them uh, and challenge them in a biblical way to take deeper steps in their faith where they can take ownership of who they are and who Christ is wanting them to become when they have stepped away from the umbrella of mother and father in their homes. We need to see that demonstration. And the way that we do that is not waiting until they're 18 or 19. It is beginning earlier and trying to instill in them, hey, when you become 18, I can't wait to see how God uses you on your college campus. Speak vision into them. Use positive encouragement starting when they're 14, 15, 16, so that you're creating a vision that they can see and that they can attain to, that when they reach that, as they respect you as their student pastor, they'll also begin to see that they want to please you just as much as they want to please their parents, whom hopefully you have also invested in. And so there's this common vision, common thread, as you've spoken to the adults in their lives, as you've spoken to the students themselves, they're not getting mixed signals. And they see that ultimately the path for success for them spiritually exists when they go off to college and they connect with Bible-believing individuals, when they collect, connect with Bible-believing organizations, and when they connect with local churches in their area where they can continue to be sculpted by the gospel, but also invest in the communities where they've been planted for those four years or for those six years, who knows what kind of students you have. So anyways, that's kind of our thoughts around the idea of transitions. That's why we exist. Um, but let me turn it back over uh, to Scooter uh, and uh, see what we need to do as far as Q&A goes. And so uh, I'm going to roll it back over to you, Scooter. All right. Uh, Chris, will you cover the, uh, the, some questions about the community colleges? Yes. Um, Denise asked about... Uh, community college and BCM on community college campuses. Um, so BCM is on every four year public school campus in the state and on many community college campuses. Um, I, there is a link on bcmlink.org that says uh, where uh, BCM is across the state. Uh, now, the uh, community college listing is uh, is constantly uh, changing. Um, the community college uh, BCM is funded by um, by the local association, and so uh, there uh, many times uh, those campus ministers are volunteers, um, and so uh, that list is is changing regularly. Um, 
we do our best to keep it up to date, but, uh, but ultimately uh, I can just about guarantee you that there will be some, uh, at least one campus that's, <laughs> that's out of date, but feel free to reach out to me. Um, if, uh, if you have a campus about a, a question about a specific campus and I'll do my best to, to get you an answer to that or, or try to, um, try to see who exactly, um, who exactly could get you the answer to that, what the, the local DOM. Um, what, uh, what other questions do you have? Well, here's, here's some that we've talked about um, in, in our group sessions that, that this may help you. As you guys think, continue to ask some questions and we'll try to cover some of the things that I think are common that you're probably, uh, that you're probably considering uh, right now. But one of the questions we asked was, um, what are some signs uh, that we look for? Uh, and I kind of covered a little bit of this, but what are some signs we look for in high school juniors or seniors indicating a student's preparedness uh, for transitioning? Like, how do we know which students of ours are ready uh, to succeed? And so we can know where we need to continue investing or where we need to move and can invest more in this. Because obviously your time's limited and your, your reach is limited. So what, what are the factors that we look for? And, uh, and some of those that we see uh, across the board that were answered by our panel when we asked this question was the idea of the ability to communicate the gospel is huge. Um, it, it amazes me how many churched individuals, adults or, or children, uh, but, but specifically in the adult la landscape of our churches, who if we just ask them outright, hey, wh how, what is the gospel? Like, how can you communicate the gospel? And, and bullets of sweat just start beating up because in so many, we've not practiced that. We've not taken on the opportunity of going, how can I clearly present the gospel message uh, in a way that, that incorporates my testimony? And so you can add with that gospel and personal testimony. Um, are you training students to be able to do that? The ones that can tend to be the ones who are, who are equipped to do that also on, on their college campuses. We know that they're going to be engaging with individuals in their classes and professors possibly at times, but even more so just the students that they're going to attach themselves to. We know that in those opening probably two to three weeks once they hit college campuses, we know that it's in that time that they're going to be making those friends and those connections that are going to carry them the next four years. Um, I, I was involved in Greek life, and so when I was at Troy, uh, I know that it was it was the opening few nights of, of of me being on campus that I met the guys that I spent the next four years of my life with, who greatly influenced me. Uh, some ways positive, some ways negative, uh, but they were the ones that were closest to my life. And so I see the need, man. I wish somebody would have prepped me early in saying, "Hey." you're going to encounter people early and you need to be prepared to share who you are and what matters to you the most before you begin to be molded in other directions. And so uh, we look for those, uh, those, those abilities to communicate the gospel. And then also the ability to simply participate in a beneficial way in small groups. Um, what students of yours, by, by the time that there's juniors and seniors, are they showing you that they have a, a grasp of how to participate in discussion? When you're discussing Bible study, when you open the floor for questions in your youth group settings, are there individuals, are your older ones that are going to college, are they, are they able to speak intelligently in a way that lets you know, hey, it's, it's clicking, they get this, and not only do they get get it intellectually, they're able to regurgitate it. They're able to, to speak it back out and, and synthesize some of this material. Those are great ways. Emily Hamilton uh, had that last one for sure. And it was a, that's a great uh, opportunity there uh, or ability to see uh, on that um, as well. That's one of our, one of our questions, I guess, that we've asked. Um, trying to look and see if we've had other ones. Hh hey, Cleve, I, I'd like to say, uh, I, I actually got something from you that I thought was important. You're talking about the relationships of, of someone moving into college. And uh, one of the things that um, that, that happened to me um, that I started handing out uh, Starbucks gift cards uh, yeah. to my seniors so that whenever they went to college, they could have a conversation with someone on campus, whether that's having a gospel conversation, whether that's uh, finding somebody to mentor them or whatever, so that they could um, have someone to invest in their lives or, or that they were investing in someone else's and, I'm, and they could buy them a cup of coffee. And I had a student who has done that um, and, and, and it, and it was, it ended up being someone who is invested in, in this, in this young man's life and making a difference in him. Uh, the other thing that, that I think that I was thinking about this morning that uh, ties into Chris a whole lot is that, um, you know, it, it's early on in life. If, if you're involved and meet some people and get involved in college ministry, uh, and it's also something that we're talking about 
the opportunities for missions. If we create a heart for missions early on, then, then there are so many opportunities as freshmen that, that we hope that they learn and know about so that they can be on mission even through college. Um, and, and I know that that impacted a lot of things uh, in, in my life as well as my wife's uh, who, who was on mission trips through, through her campus ministry. Yeah. Um, hey, uh, we have another question um, from Matt. How can we as campus ministers best help connect with the student pastors to help them transition students to our campuses? And what do student pastors uh, see uh, that we as campus ministers can do to best reach their students uh, when the students get to campus? Um, man, to really, Matt, it probably is in the reverse. Our, our churches need to do a better job of, of connecting with you connecting with student or campus pastors. Um, and so I, we take a, I, I think we need to do the better job at doing that. But some of the ways that you can do that is actively, you know, being active presence in social media um, on your campuses, right? On the campuses, one of the things that we're doing when students are going to these campuses, they're connecting on social media through Instagram, uh, their parents, especially. Uh, when I was, when I was uh, in, in a fraternity at Troy, I, one of the things that I would do is when I was part of recruitment of new students and I realized that the type of guys that, that I wanted to, to invest in, that I wanted to try to bring into our organization were the types that I probably needed their parents approval. And so rather than only reaching out to those students, I wanted to connect with their parents because if I could convince a mother or a father that I had their, their students best interests at heart, then they would be much more convinced to, to support their student choosing an organization. And the same thing I think can happen with BCM as you guys, uh, as campus managers can become more uh, uh, prevalent in on the social media aspect for Facebook, connecting with those parents. Once those children and students decide where they want to go to school, they're looking at you on your Facebook feeds. They're, they're looking on, uh, they're looking at the, the campus, the organizations that are there and being involved on those browse sessions. Uh, and then also just reaching out. Um, you probably can't hit every church. A lot of your more rural churches, it's just going to be tough because most of them are probably only graduating three or four students every year. And not all of them are enrolling in college campuses the next year. Some of them are going straight into a career. And so um, one way you can do it is go for the low hanging fruit. The larger churches that you know of that are sending students, reach out to them in a regular way. Um, build connections with those student pastors and student ministries. Ask them to help connect you to other local churches that you might know of. Um, but find ways to do that. That would be uh, great. I may, I may turn it around and ask some of our, our campus pastors as well. Uh, how can we, how can youth pastors uh, or minister, uh, ministry leaders, how can we better connect with you early on? Um, I might try to reach out to, uh, to Bill um, if you're able to, Doug may have to unmute his mic to do that. But Bill, can you give us just a few quick tips on how we can do a better job connecting with campus pastors? I think one of the things that is helpful is, is to give us access to some of your students or to your graduating seniors before the summer uh, of their freshman year. Uh, yeah. If there's some kind of senior event, can you bring us in to speak to a senior uh, Sunday school class, uh, some type of thing like that. It, it could be that you bring two or three of us in uh, to just have a panel discussion, maybe start earlier than Sunday school with a breakfast, uh, make it kind of informal, but then have the option of uh, extending it into the Sunday school hour and just let us get to know them uh, so they don't see us just as uh, some folks that uh, or, or work for a big organization or an institution, but they get to know us on a personal level. I think that'd be incredibly uh, helpful. To add to that, um, I would echo to, to what Bill is saying, that, and that can be done in a variety of ways. It can be done through, you know, you're in the Birmingham area, call Bill and ask him to come for Sunday school, ask him to come for a special event you're having. Uh, perhaps you're in a more rural area or, um, it, it's not going to work for the person to physically be there. Uh, even this kind of connection, as, as much as we're tired of Zoom these days, like the, to put a, put a face and make a connection uh, to encourage students to, um, to encourage that high school senior to think about what's next. They're thinking about college. 
and they're hearing from Greek organizations, they're hearing from, uh, from anybody and everybody on campus. And so just for, for, the, the, for you as a student pastor who's very influential in their life to, um, to be that, uh, that point of contact for them to connect them, uh, I think is, is the biggest deal is the, the personal connection that exists. And, um, and what I did uh, with John and, and Alan Tate up in Florence, uh, uh, outside of Florence in Haleyville a few years ago was just focusing on what are some, what are some takeaways? What are some things you can do in college? Uh, it's, it was more informational and, and what are some things that you, you need to be prepared for? Um, and so I think, uh, any kind of experience like that will be helpful um, for, for your students and help us in connecting with them by having you be the, the middleman versus uh, just a cold call from, from a campus minister. Well, and, and I would say uh, to add on to all the, to both of what you said, um, youth pastors, student pastors, Matt, um, going back to your question for just a second, are the gatekeeper for their kids. And we are protective of our kids and who gets in front of our kids and who meets our kids and things like that when it comes to, to, to our churches and our youth and youth ministries. Um, so the way that you can that, that you can best help, I think, is to connect with a youth pastor. Um, this just this past January before COVID-19 hit, uh, Bill drove to Chattanooga, Tennessee um, to uh, spend a day and a half at uh, what's called Co Youth Ministry Conclave. And uh, throughout that time, we have many different things that are, uh, are meetings and gatherings that are geared for Alabama Baptist youth pastors. Well, Bill got to basically build relationships and sit and talk to, to youth pastors. Well, if Bill calls one of those youth pastors now and says, hey, I'd like to come and meet with your senior Sunday school class. Well, guess what? They're going to be more likely to say yes now than they would have um, before, because they're like, who is Bill? Yeah, you say you're UAB, but I don't really know about that. But if I know Bill, because I've had relationship, even if it's over a weekend, it's not that we don't trust well or trust quickly. It's just that we, we, we got to have some relationship. And so it doesn't have to be conclave. Uh, we do uh, Super Summer Alabama. We do uh, Speak, uh, which, which is gatherings of youth pastors. We have youth pastor retreats throughout the year. And uh, for you as campus ministers, we would love for y'all to come be a part of those. Um, and, um, and as we do, um, it would be a great um, thing for, I think, you to, to build the relationships with those guys so that then um, you can come up there. Chris, you got to go speak for John, um, and you're a great resource, and I would, I would affirm what he said. But y'all did that because you and John have a relationship. Yeah. And so therefore he invited you to come in. That is the key. Build relationships with your youth pastors because um, that is, uh, they are the gate, they are the gatekeeper for, for their, for their ministries. Um, I saw where uh, Denise was asking a question uh, about leadership and just uh, how it's, it's a difficult transition uh, where you have your, your high school leaders who then step into, you know, they're big fish in a, in a small pond, and now suddenly they're small fish in a big pond, and that's a huge transition. Uh, and Denise, one of the ways that I think that we, uh, that we do that, Scooter just mentioned uh, some of those, there, there are events that are built around the state uh, that, that our, our State Board of Missions has been great over the past three to five years, especially of trying to envision ways. How can we reach and train leaders to be ready to step up? A lot of our BCMs are, are doing that as well. They're thinking that through and they're trying to develop ways that they can bring freshmen in and orient them to what, what we're doing on campus so that by the time, because they know, you know, four years goes by quickly. So they, by the time they're sophomores and juniors, they're ready to step into leadership roles. They're trained and they're, they're ready to develop. Uh, but some of these events that I know, um, one is the called event that we did for the first time this past year. Uh, and uh, it was in August. Uh, of last year and, uh, and and it was just an opportunity for any student that wanted to around the state it's not something you bring your whole group to anybody that feels called to leadership in the church called to ministry in some way uh, and they're wrestling with that man we they come down and they got some great training that day so there are events to look through like that um, there's some resources to uh, one of the books that we use at super summer that, that scooter was talking about for students who are questioning that is this this book by uh, Jeff Eorg is is God calling me 
uh, and this just um, just great opportunity there uh, answering the questions every leader asks. Uh, but it's a great way, great tools to use. But I would say look for some of those tools, Denise, uh, to help those students and see. And and some of it is just a we need to make sure that we present reality to them and let them know. Like in, in your question, I noticed you mentioned you know there there were clicks and freshmen are, are insecure. We need to prepare them that they're going to feel that way. Um, so that when they experience those emotions or when they experience a feeling of being shut out, that they realize, hey, it's really nothing personal with you. This is just part of the transition process that you're going through. And there's an end in sight. And it's not something that's going to be forever. And so you, as you experience it, be in the moment. Uh, one of the greatest ways that I've been challenged in that over the past years is journaling. Um, that is a, a skill and a habit. One of the questions that our, our, our group has asked, uh, as we've discussed, are what are some of the skills um, that we can, or what are some of the ways that we can train individuals uh, and all to, to be prepared? And that, that journaling, that, that them taking ownership of their spiritual devotional life and being able to write down uh, their emotions, being able to write down the things that they feel the Lord doing in them, even if it's not exactly understood, if it's not clearly understood, they're learning how to think through and process that so that when they do step on a college campus and they're overwhelmed, when they do step on a college campus and they don't know what to do, they're able to then in and of themselves, they've developed habits that teach them how to listen for the spirit of God, how to feel where they're being led. And they're not scared to take a step. Uh, we're not asking them to go run in full force. We're just asking, hey, take a step and see where this leads. And doors open, doors close. Uh, but it'll, it prepares them for that. But yeah, um, leadership is hard. But I know that there are organizations on campus that they realize that too. And they're ready to invest in students uh, to help build them into leaders. Hey, Cleve. Yeah. Um, I see that Dennis Tanner is on here. And uh, uh, Dennis is a, a veteran when it comes to youth ministry and has been doing it a long time and uh, someone that the guys like you and I we respect yeah. so much and uh, and so I'm gonna ask Doug if you'll unmute uh, Dennis uh, and Dennis my question for you would be just if so the students that you've seen that have graduated from 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 your student ministry and transitioned to college and went out and served and lived out their faith and, and, and didn't, didn't leave the church. They weren't a part of the, the large statistic. What would you say that, that, that was different about those students? What was the, the connect uh, that you saw in those students that, that, that maybe you didn't and some of the other students that didn't stick with it? I think the big thing that I've noticed, um, kid, students who have the desire to really grow in their walk with Christ, and as Cleve said earlier about, they really understand they, what the importance of the local body, whether it's being connected right away. Um, the students who seem to transition well, they do know who they are, they know who they're serving, and they have a desire to continue. And I think it's all about the being open to transformation. Uh, transformation takes place when we're spending time with the Lord and we're open to what he wants to do. And so when I, I see the students, they share their testimony before they left. They um, are continuing to have a quiet time. They understand what that means, what it's all about. But uh, to me, the big difference is they've, they've got a mindset that when they go off, I know like our students who go to the Auburn area, they want to do the Oaks. They want to be prepared for, uh, and the Oaks is a retreat where a lot of different churches come together and faith-based organizations are, are looking at uh, trying to help students know all these are opportunities for you to grow. So um, I really think the students have a mindset of, hey, the first two weeks, that's gonna make a difference. I, I share that a lot with them that what you do in the first two weeks, you're forming habits for the rest of the year, which will really set you on a pattern for your entire time of college life. And so uh, not that you can't change that if you've made some unhealthy decisions, but um, those students seem to do pretty well. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Uh, just um, appreciate you and, and all the work you do. and. Um, and uh, the, the many lives you've invested in. Appreciate y'all. So are there any more questions that you might have? Um, hey, one of the things that, and feel free if you guys have one to, to, to shoot one over. Um, 
what are some of the specific examples of successful uh, endeavors or implementations that, 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 that we've seen occur in our churches? And some of you may have this. You can shoot that out in your text on the, on the chats as well and let us kind of know. Um, but what are some of the implementations that have been made in our churches? That was one of the questions that we asked our, our transitions team uh, to go through. And, uh, and they've, they've had several great examples and discussions of, of some of those things that we've done. One uh, was interesting. See, in my context, I'm used to doing, we, we split our guys and girls in Sunday school. And so uh, they've come through, depending upon the, the, uh, the amount is how many they can fit into a room. But we've mostly kept guys and girls separate. Uh, we spoke to some churches who in their, their senior year, they intentionally combined just seniors, but with the guys and girls for life groups. And so some of you may already do that. And some of you, the numbers and the amount of workers may necessitate that that's all you can do. But for those churches that, that may tend to split their youth for six years, that may be a great opportunity your senior year is to get them to develop relationships, um, teach guys how to relate to the females in their group in a, in a biblical way. Uh, so they can develop friendships there in the right way uh, and teach them the same thing on the backside of that uh, to do uh, to, for females to learn how to, uh, how, to, how to develop friendships with males who are modeling a biblical lifestyle so that as they step into college, they know what types of, of guys they need to be uh, surrounding themselves with. And the same thing true with the guys. They know what type of, of females they can be surrounding themselves with. Um, uh, some other things that we've done is, uh, or, or that we've seen done as well um, is using that Sunday school opportunity uh, to maybe break away from the traditional Sunday school curriculum and bring in different curriculum that specifically prepares uh, your seniors for college. Uh, rather than staying on, um, we, we use a lot of Lifeway material. So rather than just doing the same Lifeway material that I've done for six years, we take specific chunks of their year. We don't do it the entire senior year, but we take specific chunks of that senior year and we bring in some other type of curriculum that is college prep. And you can Google all sorts of things. And Lifeway has stuff as well as other uh, publishing companies as well that are geared for that. But that's there. And that's a great opportunity because you've got a captive audience and they're all in the same walk of life. And so you can begin to do that. And it kind of treats them in a different way. And it begins to separate them in a healthy way to let them know, hey, we're, we're doing different with you because you're about to transition out. And, and rather than continuing to treat 12th graders like 8th graders, now you're treating 12th graders like 12th graders, and you're preparing them for what they're doing. And they see that and they sense that. And I think that's a great opportunity as well of some of the implementations. Um, but uh, I know like John Lamarck has, has had some great ideas. I know he's on this panel too. Uh, John, what are some of the implementations or some of the things that you've seen churches do uh, or, or that you've done just as a student pastor that are super helpful in preparing students uh, to, to depart and to step out into college. You guys already mentioned, we got uh, a couple of speakers to come up during the senior year for these students. Uh, we call it Senior Summit. And we got people like Chris or Alan Tate or a guy from Montgomery, his name escapes me, that come and talk to our students and our parents that uh, show them how to uh, prepare for college the beginning of their senior year and what it looks like to leave for college at the end of their senior year. So that's real helpful. That's awesome. Uh, I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Easily bringing people in uh, and stuff like that. Um, Scooter, can you think of any other like topics that we've not discussed that you and I had talked about previously? Um, well, one of the things that, um, that someone just texted me uh, that, that I thought was, was pretty, pretty good uh, is, is what can we do? You asked the question, what can we do to help? campus ministers and uh and one of the things that one of them just just told me was you know for us to to truly make sure that our students are have true genuine conversion and not just well let's let's take their salvation as a decision one time at camp somewhere but if if we're seeing true transfer life transformation uh and, and true life conversion uh, for salvation then what happens is when there's a life change there then it will it will um, and we're we're helping with that. Then then when they get there, it would it would be a a, a change, uh, and it would be a difference in the way they they walk and live their lives. So, um, I think it's easy for us to to try and uh, please the church, please different things about by by getting certain numbers, by baptizing a certain amount of kids. But if we baptize kids and they really hadn't had salvation in their lives, then we've 
done a grave injustice more than anything else. And there's no way that they're going to carry out a, a false salvation throughout their, their days in college, young adult, and, and, and hopefully one day. So, hey, you know, another, another great way of transitioning students, um, some of the implementations, I'm looking back through my notes, um, panel discussions. You know, I, I, I've, I just sometimes I overlook this, the importance and the effectiveness of panel discussions and not it doesn't have to be professionals. That's the great thing is not all of your students. We're, we're not trying to teach students that that I think there's just I guess this mentality that the students who are really good at church things they're that God's calling them to be professional Christians later. Right. They're God's calling them to ministry. And what we need to see is, no, 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 the standard is that we want all of God's followers, right? We want all the followers of Jesus to be maturing in their faith and not simply because they feel like God might be calling them to vocational ministry, but rather we want them to see that this is the norm. We want to create a culture where actively pursuing our faith in college becomes the norm. And so some panel discussions may be great within your church. Who are some adults who have navigated that transition well? Who are some couples that you can bring in that met in college uh, that you could speak with or that, that you could have in front of your students uh, to do that? Um, who, are some, uh, who are some people maybe that have a powerful testimony in your church uh, who have not done that transition well and they've had to reap some of the, uh, some of the harvest of that uh, as well and have those real discussions in front of your students in a way that they see um, not a polished version of a professional but rather they see people that they relate to, that they see in and out every Sunday serving in their local churches, and they can go, hey, I'm just like that guy, or I'm just like that woman, and, and they've navigated this well also. Um, also find ways to really highlight the students who have left your student ministry and done well. Uh, don't do it in a way that puts them on a pedestal. Uh, don't do it in a way that necessarily um, sets them up to fall, because, because we know that, that adolescence and young adulthood, there are so many pitfalls and we don't want to create an opportunity where we put so much of a burden on individuals' backs, but allow those who are doing well the opportunity to come back and speak life to your students when they are. When you know they're coming back for Thanksgiving after they've been at college and you've seen them, um, take it, take it opportunity for them to just come back and say, hey, to your seniors that are soon to be making that transition. Um, there's a local guy here named Tommy McGregor, who his, his whole ministry is built around transitions. He's a great resource. If any of you want to, to look him up, Tommy McGregor. Um, but he has several books that he's written about this transition. And one of the ways that he challenged me a few years ago when we, he and I were talking was he made the mention of asking me, how many of my students do I visit on college campuses? And I, <laughs> it's like, you know, in, in my context here at Eastmont, we have a college pastor and so part of me, I guess, took this procrastination form, like we were talking about earlier, where once they were away from me, hey, good luck to my college pastor, hope you do well. Uh, and rather than me and our college pastor teaming up and going to college campuses, I know we have students at Troy, why don't he and I drive down to Troy and go have lunch with them one day on campus? Hey, why don't y'all bring some of your friends that you've met? We'll buy you lunch. We just want to see how life's going but find opportunities to continue to be involved in their lives, not to hover over them, not to be helicopter parents because they need to taste freedom too. But some of those continuing uh, connections need to still be there as they stretch their wings. We want to be able to know, send them text messages, send them emails, um, like some of the things that they're doing on Instagram. It just lets them know in the back of their mind, hey, my youth pastor didn't just like me because he was paid to, but my youth pastor likes me because I matter to him. And he's still following me here in college and he still, he still sees what I'm doing. Um, shoot them a, tech, a message in the morning sometime and tell them, hey, I'm praying for you today. Keep them on your prayer list, uh, but let them know that they don't simply matter to you because they're under the age of 18. They matter to you because they were created in the image of God, and for whatever reason, God saw fit to give you spiritual influence over their lives for a particular period of time, and now you cannot wait to see the ways that they serve the kingdom now that they're out from immediately under your umbrella of coverage, uh, and that's made a huge difference in connection, continuing connections with me and students, and as they've grown up now, I still have students now who call me or text me uh, that are a, you know, that are 25 years old and, and 26 years old and they're married and they're having their first kid and they're reaching out to me and they're saying, Hey, thank you for this. Or, Hey, I saw something you did at your new church now. And, um, and that, that makes all the difference there. So that's a great way that you can help that transition. Uh, also is just not quitting on them, but as they move on, 
it's, I mean, it's almost like the way Jesus made disciples, right? He says, hey, I'm going somewhere, but I'm going to be with you, right? You won't see me, but I'm going to be with you still, right? And that's kind of our, our opportunity there as well is, hey, you're, you're not going to be seeing me as much, but then I'm still with you just as much. And the spirit unifies us, and I'm watching you as you continue along your way. Uh, so those, those are some great opportunities as well. Well, Cleve, I want to say thank you so much for um, for your uh, for your information today, and um, and it is, it is about that time that we need to to wrap up and uh, and make sure that we uh, honor and, and respect everybody's time. I do want to say thank you for uh, for Bill and Dennis and John and um, and Emily and Abby for all of their their contribution to this, um, and uh, and I know that. Um, thank you for campus ministers for investing in so many uh, and, and connecting to your local churches because we are just a, a way to try and get them involved in a ministry on campus so then we can send them out there uh, to be a part of local churches. Um, and so I just want to thank you for joining us today. I want to uh, I do want to recognize that this is um, a resource of the Alabama State Board of Missions and we can only do this uh, because of giving through cooperative program and so uh, we're so thankful uh, for, for churches that come together and work together, cooperating together and giving together so that we can uh, provide resources for our churches and for our ministers and for hopefully make an impact um, in, in the lives of students and, uh, and, and help uh, them grow in their faith as they leave and graduate college. So thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Doug. Um, and we will see you next time.